Okay, so uh, we're gonna continue with this side of the landscape. So first of all, get my brush. Ah! All right, right here. Okay. So we're gonna do the outline of um, the trees on the other side. Okay. All right, so right here, you see here. All right, let's see where the space is. Okay, maybe we start from here. All right, so kind of tilt it, starting from the top. Okay, to the bottom. Thicken the trunk. And then here's one from here, kind of straight. Okay. Because this is closer to you, so you see that the trunk is uh, thicker than the one on this end, on the left hand side, and then there's one in the back. Okay, you stop here, and you continue, and as you go down, try to exert more pressure on the brush, so then your trunk will look thicker. All right, and then get some more of the pink. And then I'm gonna do the, the branches, okay? Kind of use it a uh, the dry brush. You can see, it's a scarred away, so I uh, you know make it a little bit dry. So you have a feeling that is um it's like farther away from where you see it and right here. Okay. I wouldn't worry about the stroke at this point because we're gonna color it, it's gonna get smudged, so I don't really uh, worry too much. And then on the background, before we go to the background, let's do the land below the tree. Yeah, this might be a, a pond or like a creek underneath there. So then I'm gonna leave some room. And that's where the, the creek's gonna go through. I mean, or, or the lakes. Okay, get some color. Okay. Hopefully you can see it. Mm. Right. And then you see that there's some brand there's some tree behind this tree right here. Uh so I'm gonna use the dry brush technique. It's gonna I'm gonna add the landscape the land behind it here okay make sure you leave some space otherwise um you won't be able to see the creek running through okay. I'm, gonna do, I'm gonna draw the land here okay and then okay and then i'm gonna you know, if you want to do, you want to make the texture of the, the the land, you know, this texture here, you can kind of divide up your brush. 
and do this. Okay, like this. This is um after the less the last lesson, you know, then I kind of find out, you know, oh, there's a way to do that, you know, to to make that kind of texture. Okay, maybe yeah. that here some area darker so you don't have to um, make your brush stay in a very fine uh, tip you can just like maybe spread apart the tip and then if you have some take a little bit of the ink then just go ahead and go like this to it so then you it would it will you know you will, you'll be able to create this kind of texture on the paper, okay? And here, and then you let it go through. If you want, you can you can add, you make it a little bit darker. If you want to stress the sh uh, the shadow of the. the ground underneath the tree. Okay. And then what I'm going to do, I'm going to add those little rocks on the creeks. Okay. Let's see here. See my tip, the tip of my brush, I, I did not refine the tip. So then when you don't do that, the tip right here, you see it? Kind of open it up a little bit then you will, it will give you that kind of texture. Like right here, a little bit here, maybe a little triangle over here. And then as it goes farther and farther away, you won't see that kind of uh, detail. You will only see like a dot, black dot here and there. That's also the rocks. When you look closely, it might look like something like this okay right and then I'm what I'm gonna do right now I'm gonna add a little bit of water into my black ink palette I'm going to do the foliage or the leaves on my trees okay Make sure you put that foliage or the, the leaves on the edge of the branches. Not so much on the inside, but you know, outside. Okay. And then right here. See here. Now don't overdo it. Maybe but maybe on the top of the tree you want to add a little bit more. And when you feel like your brush is running out of ink, you can um, get some water and go back into the palette and get the ink. Maybe on the top of the tree, you want to add more of the, the leaves there, a cluster of leaves, and right here, kind of extend it out, right? And then you can go back and add some more if you don't, if you feel that your tree is not full enough, okay? So I'm going to add the tree trunk, but I want it to make the color darker. So I'm going to add some water. Go back here, add some water. I don't want my brush to be too wet, but then I don't want it to be too dry that I cannot draw the trunk, okay? 
Okay, I'm gonna show you guys my the we adjust my camera. It's kind of slanted to the other way. Okay, you see here? Yes, yeah, so it go because this tree is farther away from you, so the trunk is thinner. Okay, and then the branches is also thinner. Okay, this is called perspective. When you see something far, far away, they look smaller than if you, uh, than if they are like right in front of you and then they, you know, they, they are bigger. Okay. We'll, we'll talk about that in the future. Okay, I'm just gonna, here and there. And then here, behind it, there's some tree. But I'm not gonna draw every single trunk that's attaching to the tree, uh, every single branches that's attached to the tree trunk. Okay, all right. And um, we are going to add those cluster of, of leaves right here, let me see. Here and there. Okay. Just on the edge, on the top, you know, add some more. But then on the side, um, just a little bit here and there. It doesn't, do, you know, I mean, I don't, you don't have to add like all over the place. And that, that would be too much. Okay. And right, maybe a little bit here and there. All right. So what we're gonna do, we are going to, you see here, this is like a, a flock of uh, birds. And you know, I'm pretty sure you guys know how to draw birds, you know, with those uh, strong, those, you know, like how you draw birds, you know, usually you do this, right? The birds flying. So we're gonna do that too. But the only difference here is you have to do it very small. And then the stroke goes like this this way down and then you go going back in and in the center you draw out the the other wings okay I don't know what kind of birds that are, that are flying but I'm just copying what the painting okay wow the brush is too dry need to add some water okay make sure they are the about the same size okay i don't want anything that's like bigger you don't want to be you don't want like a bird uh, a group of like small birds and then there's a a bigger bird you know in flying together with them that might be a predator <laughs> okay all right so like this right all right, so, and then let's talk about the mountain. Now, the mountain, you do remember how we dyed the, um, the leaves on the tree? We use different, we, you know, we do the green, right? And then we do like light yellow, green, and then we do the green, the yellow green. And then we do that the same with this. We'll start off, uh, the black and then we dilute it with water and then you wanted to the you know, the the mountain that is far far away is covered most of the time they're covered with covered covered it with uh, fog okay so we want to add a little bit of blue to make it like gray uh, probably you will ask me how come you didn't add white you know you know remember watercolor we don't really use white Far, far away, we painted the mountain with the light blue-gray. Yeah, I, mean, I wish I could use a, uh, maybe I should have like a longer paper so then the, the mountain will extend, will, you will see a better, um, you know, shape of the mountain. It seems like this is like, this will be cut off, okay, because my paper is not, 
long enough. Okay, so see here? I won't cover the bird. I'll just like go around the bird and then color the back. Now, if this is the right the rice paper, then you'll see, you know, this kind of um um it will create this kind of pattern. Cuz the rice paper they really absorb the colors and water and it will create you know that kind of pattern okay so this is this is my first layer i'm gonna wait a little while and then go back with a darker color and then right here too you know it's behind the tree there's another uh maybe a a, a smaller mountain or a hill and then it's kind of extended to the back okay and the the birds are actually flying in between this elevation here okay there's a mountain and then maybe this is the fog and then there's a higher mountain in the back okay and they're kind of bury in so i'll come back to the mountain but meanwhile, let's do the flower, the the leaves. Okay. The first uh, highlight of this is I'm gonna go back to the back here. I'm gonna color. The tree. Some green. Like on the top, the shade will be lighter because of the sun. And then as it goes down to this area, you can use more green because um, it will be, it will act like the shadow. See here? I'm not even going to touch the bottom. I'll, I'll use different color for that. So I'm going to um, continue coloring. I'll mix up with the green that I already had. And then right here, too, I'm going to do the back. Okay, just going to tap. And then as you go down, the color will get darker. Then mix some more green color, green yellow color. That will be my shade, my initial shade for the tree. Now, because this is a cardstock paper, so the color tends to be smear even though after it dries it will smear when you put another layer of color on over the previous color but if you're using a rice paper or a real watercolor paper that won't happen when you when the color the black color is dry you go over it with a lighter color uh, it probably won't smear okay so it's important what kind of paper you use when you use in watercolor. With acrylic, we won't have this kind of problem because they dry and then they stay dry. And whatever color that you put on won't uh, affect the color that you overlaid on top of it. Okay. So you see here, and then right here, I'm going to give it a light shade of green. Okay. Okay. Maybe here. Actually, the top here should be lighter, the color, but because it got smeared with the black, so it, it looks kind of darker. Okay, and then now I'm going to mix up the green 
with the yellow green. Wash my brush, get a little bit of yellow, mix it in here. Okay, I'm gonna color the bottom. Right, this area is more dense. Right, I'm gonna add the color. I'm just sometimes you can just dab in the color, just dab it on top. So that was it will let you you know feel that oh it's really dense you know there's a lot of leaf that's on the tree on that side or to separate you know this tree from that tree well right here i didn't do a very good job maybe i'll use a darker green to do that separate the tree okay the top here Then maybe here, just gonna dab that. Okay. Then what about the, the ground? I'm gonna use this color again. I'm gonna just color it. Color the ground, this is my initial color. You know, the earth beneath. I don't need to add a lot of water. I'm just whatever color I have here. Because I'm going to put the green on. Okay, wash my brush. Like I said, if the water gets too dirty, pour it out. Start up with a new clean brush with a new clean uh, cup of water, okay? And here, and then you give it a little bit of lush here, and here, okay? And here, and right here, And then this creek right here. I will use, you know, whatever is left over. The yellow here with lots of water diluted. I'm just going to gently color through. Try not to touch the the black, okay? Ooh, I already made a mess. Okay, I'm just... So then instead of leaving it white, you kind of give people a sense that, oh, this is a creek. You know, this is the water. Here, and then you see that right here, they are they use some kind of gray, they use a little bit of gray and a little bit of earthly color, the, the brown color, and then they just go over this to make the rock look a little bit more realistic, right? Okay, and then the further it goes in the back, don't touch it, just leave it alone, okay. Then that you know, and also added a little bit of light green here, a yellow green on the tip because it's near the creek. Maybe there's more, you know, vegetation on the on the land here. You know, you can add some yellow. Okay, here, and then we're gonna go back to the mountain. Now, what they did. They did the same thing, the creek and the back, the, the fog, they used the yellow, okay? 
But what I'm going to do, I'm going to use the yellow and some of the brown that we use. Okay, and add it into the yellow. And I'm going to wash it. From here, I'm going to wash it over. Make sure you don't touch the birds, okay? Try not to touch it. Otherwise, the bird will be smear. Oh, no. I think I did. I did it. Okay. Just a light wash. Now, this is optional. You don't have to do it. You don't feel like it, okay? And then now I'm going to use the black. And actually, what I'm going to do, I'm going to add the blue into the black. The blue into the black. And then dilute it with water. Hey, okay. Got some water here. Okay. See? Then I'm going to go over here and wash the mountain. So it will give a little bit of the three-dimensional feeling. Be like you know the, the lighter part will be the back of the mountain and then the darker area will be you know the area where it's closer to you okay not sure with this kind of paper will that make um, that kind of effect but definitely on a rice paper or on a watercolor paper you will see that kind of effect. Just play around with it, okay? It doesn't. It doesn't take the you know first. Um, sometimes you have to play around with watercolor to achieve practice and practice. Of course, you know to achieve the your desirable, you know, outcome. The darker the color is, which means that the the area is closer to you. If the color is really, 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 really um, light. It means that the 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 area is farther away from you. Okay, but my paper is wet, so then everything seems to be like blending together. Okay, so I'm gonna do a add a little bit of black. Maybe just. Wow, this is too dark. I messed up. But don't worry, there should be a way to fix the problem. Okay, just wash it. Wash it, wash it, wash it. Okay, I think. Yeah. And right here, just wash it down. Wash it down, like this. All right? And then the sky, okay? It's kind of kind of murky color, just like the fog. Uh, but I will use this yellow for the sky. It's just a light wash. Very, very light wash. Okay, you see it here? Huh. This is our landscape. And then one last thing I want to show you guys is how to do your name in, in uh, with a, you know, imitation of the Chinese uh, chop. So I'll be right back. Okay, so I was uh, show I was telling you guys I'm going to show you how to make a Chinese name chop. Okay, a name stamped. So first of all, we will have to use two uh, oil pastel. We have the white and also also keep in mind if you're using this technique always always make sure that your white oil pastel has to be super clean okay you have to wipe it down every time you finish you want it to use okay so on that on this landscape we want to find an area where it is clean when i mean clean i mean that it has to be have it has to have a white color background a light color background okay i will color it with white color color a white square okay and then set it aside and then i have this red color and then remember where you did that square 
where you created that white square. Okay, and then do this on top and color it over the white oil pastel that you created it. Okay, make sure the square look nice. Okay, so you created that square, right? Get something sharp, uh, such as a what do you call it? A uh, toothpick if you have one. You know, I have a stick here. So what I'm gonna do, I'm going to do my first initial. My first initial like this. Dot and then M. That's my the first letter of my last name. So you see, I created a Chinese name chop stamp. Okay, you can do that. And then what I do, I will write something. Okay, see what this book says. Just gonna try to copy it. Uh, you can write it in English. You don't have to write it in Chinese. Okay, maybe I should do it in English too, since not very many of you know how to write Chinese. Okay. I will write today's date, which is the 17, 2000. 21. All right. So basically, that's it. We finished it. Let me zoom in. See it. 